Welcome, Bow Betters. Yes, it's a challenge having confidence in your decision making after such a poor outing last week. But watching tape on the main and co-main fighters, you get energized by the true adversity. There's a, Cinder there's a Cinderella story here that you could apply to any of these fighters. All have reached the pinnacle of the sport after challenging upbringings and difficult career paths. These two fights are the best in not only this card, but what the UFC has to offer in what the skills and character are to takes, it takes to be a champion. Both these fights can be pigeonholed into a skill versus power matchup. Figueredo is extremely powerful and really had Moreno hurt in plenty of instance in their first bout. But Moreno's heart, skill, movement, and his fighter IQ enabled him to stay on the feet or stay in the fight and even threaten Figueredo numerous times in the latter as well as in the beginning rounds. He was able to counter Figueredo on the feet quite well. Brandon Moreno has a better X expected expected rounds number as well as an XR percentage. You but you again back to the power. You look at forty four percent of his wins for Davis and Figueredo, where Brandon Moreno is using that that grappling to control his opponents as well as to get submissions. So he's got forty three percent submissions, but Davis and Figueredo is still dangerous on the the mat as well. So. Both guys are big to div for the division, but the concern of note in the, the storyline behind all this is Figueredo's cardio and weight cut. Figueredo's always goes 100% and has one method or game plan, and that is to finish. Moreno has such slick movement offensively and defensively, both on the ground and on the feet, and he doesn't gas, whereas Figueredo, he gets wilder with his offense and more vulnerable to Moreno's counter strikes and his takedowns, which are going to be huge as the fight progresses. Figgy comes to brawl, and that expends a lot of energy. Both guys are going to be able to see a lot of the, the striking patterns and modes of attack because they have fought each other twice. So how are these guys going to adjust and change their games? It's going to see if it be interesting to see if that trip to fight ready has really aided Devis and Figueredo in finding Brandon Moreno's timing as well as his odd strikes that he, he throws and catches Devison with. Devison has better striking accuracy, but he just comes straight and forward. He doesn't really have any defense. He keeps his hands down. And I think Brandon Moreno has a skill type striking advantage where, of course, Devis and Figueredo has that power. Both these guys have trained with Cejudo, and it's going to be interesting to see who, if Devison's able to benefit from that more recent training. He, Cejudo claims that he, he sees Brandon Moreno, he knows him well, and he's versed in what his skill sets are and his habits, but that was some time ago. People do develop and change, and Brandon Moreno certainly has, where Devison has not really developed, and that's why he went over to fight ready. I think what is going to be very important besides the defensive striking is going to be key is Moreno grappling and mixing this up. Defensively, I don't think either of these guys are very good. Brandon Moreno has that orthodox style where he just keeps his hands up, which he really needs to do. And Devison is still able to tag off on him. Where, where Devison has has always just to have that of keeping his hands down, coming in one direction, not moving laterally, enables Brandon Moreno to actually touch him up, especially in that counter striking where he may not be able to throw as much volume. He absorbs slightly much in the fights that they had. It's been very, very close on the numbers, but I'm really thinking more of, of the grappling being the key to victory here for Brandon Moreno. He, in his first match, he landed four of eight takedowns for three minutes and three over three minutes of control time. He has great takedown defense. And in the second match, he landed two of takedowns, which basically gave him the fight. And he controlled him for like four minutes or something like that. Moreno has a great clinch game, which allowed him to make those, get those takedowns, tax Figgy's cardio, throw Figueredo's timing off. But it still begs the question if training with Cejudo will improve Figueredo's wrestling or at least allow him to improve his counter wrestling so he doesn't have to be taken down as much as he did or get in a, in a strong clinch that Brandon Moreno got him in a few times. We saw in each of these bouts that Moreno was able to scramble and really is fast in getting his hooks in. He's very quick, and he was able to get that dominant back position where he works well. I think either of these guys are going to work well. For Moreno, though, I'm concerned about his defensive striking and his, his striking output. 
Both guys are finishers, but Figueredo, I think, has better striking accuracy slightly. Again, these are just numbers. I don't think the numbers are going to matter here. I mean, they landed a... a Moreno landed 132 strikes in the first bout and almost triple that output uh, and twice the effectiveness in the second bout. But it's like which version of Divis and Figueroa are we going to see and which version of Brandon Moreno are we going to see? Are, are, as I mentioned before, are there going to be improvements? Are we going to see a different match than we've seen before? Right now, the line is closed slightly on Moreno as Figgy has, to some accounts, won that first bout. And the casuals knew or know that we're, they're sort of granting him a pass on that second performance because of the weight cuts. I bet Figgy by finish that first fight, and I knew he was compromised that second bout. So I'm going to wait here until the weigh ends. I think a lot of people are doing that, but I'm leave, le leaning slightly on Devis and Figueredo by decision or by finish. Yes, I'm still thinking of that finish prop, even though Moreno has never been finished. In fact, there is a nice if there is a nice number on rounds one and two for Figueredo, I might sprinkle that and Figueredo by decision. Figueredo lands the more powerful strikes, and although Moreno again never been knocked out. He's vulnerable to Davidson's uh, Figueroa's pressure, and as long as he comes prepared and is and has a game plan and has that cardio, I think he could hurt Moreno and even finish him. It's sad of me to say that I'm a huge Brandon Moreno fan. I knew he was going to become a superstar. I bet with him and bet against him. I wish I would have bet with him a lot more. He surprised me all the way through and through. But in this third fight, I think we're going to see some differences, and I just don't know what those are going to be are yet. But in the meantime, I definitely want to wait. Figueredo handles that weight cut, but with the Cejudo camp, if he can make the adjustments that he needs, he is G the mattress, guys. Don't sleep on fighter for this event. Devison Figueredo, he believes that the first fight tells us everything. He won that fight if it wasn't for that point deduction. I have to somewhat agree, but I still am concerned. I don't have a lot of credence into Cejudo's and fight ready yet. They haven't shown me yet that he can do this, uh, but... G the mattress guy thinks he has the abilities if he could stop the takedowns and make those adjustments he could dominate four rounds of the fight or finish so I have to agree with him a little bit there because in the first fight there was a lot of similarities to these guys so if you've made it this far you are about better please comment like and subscribe hit the notification bell let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section are we completely off base here or is Brandon Moreno just have the better skill set to win this every single time they fight? So let us know in the comment section. Thank you very much. Good luck this week.